Today, we're going to be talking about arterial blood gases. What we're going to cover, how to systematically approach the ABG, everything about oxygen, carbon dioxide, and acid base, and anion gaps. And at the end, I'm going to share the one thing you have to do, or else your ABG interpretation might be useless. When you're looking at an ABG, you're going to see pH, PaO2, PaCO2, and bicarbonate. So where do you start? with oxygen. You need to know whether or not your patient is hypoxic. And if they are hypoxic, that means they're in respiratory failure. And this is divided into two types. Type one, this is where the patient is hypoxic, but they're not retaining any CO2. So their PaCO2 is low or normal. If they're in type two respiratory failure, they're hypoxic and they're retaining CO2. So now that you've assessed whether or not your patient is in respiratory failure, now it's time to assess for acidosis and alkalosis. This is super simple. Start by looking at the pH. The pH might be normal, acidotic, or alkalotic. Now, if it's acidotic or alkalotic, you need to find out what the most likely cause is. So if the pH matches the carbon dioxide, it's probably a respiratory cause. If it matches the bicarbonate, it's probably a metabolic cause. Sometimes it might match both, in which case it's a mixed picture. Now, after you've identified the cause, you want to assess whether or not there's any compensation. We're gonna look at an ABG, and after that, it should be very clear. So, is the patient hypoxic? The patient is hypoxic and they're retaining CO2, so they're in type two respiratory failure. Next, let's look at acid base. The pH is acidotic, okay? So does it match the PaCO2 or the HCO3? It matches the PaCO2, so it's a respiratory acidosis. The bicarb is high, so therefore there's a metabolic compensation. However, the pH is not normal, Therefore, it's only a partial metabolic compensation. So, in summary, we have type 2 respiratory failure, respiratory acidosis, and partial metabolic compensation. So, is the patient hypoxic? No. Let's look at acid base. The pH is acidotic. Does it match the PaCO2? No. The CO2 is low. Does it match the HCO3? Yes, it does. This is a metabolic acidosis and the PaCO2 is low. There is a respiratory compensation, which again is partial because the pH is not normal. So in summary, no hypoxemia. This is a metabolic acidosis with respiratory compensation. That's partial. Okay, now <laughs> brace yourselves. We're going to talk about the anion gap. The anion gap is the difference between the positively and negatively charged ions in the plasma. So we can get an estimate of this using sodium and potassium to make up our positive ions and bicarb and chloride ions as our negative ions. The normal range is from 3 to 11. And this is particularly useful in acidosis, which can be divided into acidosis with a normal anion gap and acidosis where there's an increased or raised anion gap. In a raised anion gap, we have the addition of an acid. So lactic acid in shock or heart failure, ketones from DKA or urate in renal failure. These extra H plus ions bind to the bicarbonate, which means there's less negative ions. So the anion gap increases. Now, bear with me. So in a normal anion gap, there's the loss of bicarbonate. But wait, if you lose bicarb, shouldn't the anion gap increase? Well, not quite. So when we lose bicarbonate, diarrhea, or in renal tubular acidosis, we lose bicarbonate in the urine, the kidneys compensate by absorbing more chloride ions. Therefore, we lose bicarb, but we gain chloride, 
so the anion gap remains normal. This is also why this type of acidosis is referred to as hyperchloremic, because there are more chloride ions in the blood. Finally, one last thing you must do to ensure your APG interpretation is accurate. You need to check whether or not your patient is on oxygen. Always report the FiO2. The reason being, the normal ranges of PaO2 are for patients on room air. Therefore, if you don't know this detail, your APG might be useless, as a normal PaO2 on a patient who's receiving a large amount of oxygen isn't normal. Now you're ready to take on the ABG. So please like, share and subscribe to help us keep making these videos. If you have any comments, suggestions or feedback, drop them down below. In the meantime, check out our Instagram. There's a lot of content there and I will see you guys next time.